Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. And this is Mac. And this is our Haru recap uh, for the Basho that completed a couple of days ago due to some scheduling issues. We weren't able to get our instant reactions on this one. Uh, Jake, why don't you take your best stab at uh, pronouncing the, the winner's names correctly? Kiri Bayama? <laughs> oh, no, he did it right. Not, not, not that <laughs> winner, Ryan. We've gone over that. Kitty Bayama won. Not you got what you winner. wanted. Oh, you mean Yokozuna you mean Ryan? I didn't get what I wanted. No, I said, you got what what I, I said you got what you and wanted. Okay, Daisho didn't win. I already did the thing. Exactly so. what I didn't want. It. They were, they, <laughs> you're they welcome, were arguing Jake. over it, but I already said it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to have to say it throughout the rest of the episode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yokozuna Ryan and Yokozuna Flarek made me their their little bitch boy. Uh, pretty bad. Um, one God of the worst. Right we did one of the worst performances in GSP that, prediction history. That was pretty bad, dude. Yeah, uh, tied, <laughs> literally tied with your previous performance in the GSP prediction. Cool. Oh. <laughs> real, real good couple of Bashos for Jake here. I will segue this into the fact that I spent the first weekend of the Basho and the last weekend of the Basho traveling for amateur sumo. Um. All, all your predictions two weeks. were made prior to those travels. <laughs> yeah. Two say, weeks how ago. Did that help? <laughs> two weeks ago was when uh, Sumo Nationals happened, uh, United States Nationals in uh, Orlando, Florida. And then just this last weekend, we had the first youth tournament in modern amateur sumo history. Uh, well, U.S., I guess, specifically. But the Kuma Sumo Bash in Nashville, hosted by the, as far as I'm aware, the only high school sumo club in the country. Uh, the Antioch Bears. Mm. It was awesome. Uh, driving to Nashville from Des Moines, not awesome. Having a good time in Nashville <laughs> after having already arrived there, very awesome. Um, so yeah, we got uh, we we had a pretty fun tournament. Both of those events you can find streaming on the GSB YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, there will be more coverage of those coming up. Uh, last update on amateur sumo coming up on April 29th is going to be one of the biggest events of the spring here, uh, the Roller Town Showdown, uh, where literally Gagamaru is coming to Texas uh, to do a sumo seminar. There's a beer release, and then there's also going to be like a, a mock basho where we're going to split wrestlers up into east and west, have them do like a, a semi-round robin. It's going to be a friggin' blast, and probably the last time that I'm going to be allowed to travel for sumo for a while. <laughs> yeah. I have. I bet you Ooh. kind of played all those cards, and, yeah. and the wife is uh, <laughs> going to be requesting some time with her yeah, husband. V. She, she says the Gagamaru is going to be there. I am not aware of any others. So, all yes. right. <laughs> uh, well, there is Lady Gaga's alternate sumo personality. Oh, so that's yes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I have been sick for like this whole thing. So it's been uh, difficult. But um, yeah. I I, uh, I was able to watch almost the whole Basho, <laughs> which was, <laughs> I'm sure I'm far from alone here. But uh, yeah, we got another copy strike, uh, copyright strike going. Uh, lovely to have these constantly now. Yeah. So yeah, I missed a couple days. I caught all the good matches, all the all the important stuff. But yeah, uh, anybody? Did you guys manage to watch all 15 days, or did you get cut out by the end of it? I mean, I, I watch the matches as soon as I can when I wake up in the morning, so it's never an issue for me. Fair enough. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Kitam, right. Kitamiyama's second YouTube channel didn't go down, so that was good as well. <laughs> you like, guys all behaved yourself this Basho. For then. YouTube, if you could <laughs> sit up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Just tilt your camera down. Like, either's fine. <laughs> no. Flaric, Flaric will do what a Flaric does. <laughs> um, It'll be fine. They'll figure it out. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, we 
we'd never really pimp our YouTube channel. We do, we do post all these videos on YouTube as well as releasing them in podcast form. Our YouTube channel is currently sitting at 966 subscribers. We're 34 subscribers away from 1,000. It'd be pretty neat if we got to 1,000 before the start of the next Bosch show. So even if you don't plan on watching these episodes on YouTube, uh, it'd be it'd be awful neat if you could go to our YouTube channel, Grand Sumo Breakdown, subscribe uh, so that we could get that one thousand not one thousand dollar one thousand <laughs> subscriber <laughs> Wait, <what>? milestone. <laughs> I assume you get a check from YouTube for a thousand dollars if you hit that. Milestone. I am pretty sure sense. then we become influencers and can yeah. quit our day jobs. Exactly. Uh, Somehow uh, subscribers uh, means dollars, and some there's <laughs> there's a formula there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, sorry. Speaking of dollars, <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Wanted oh, to yes. shout out our uh, uh, some of our uh, some of our patrons who help uh, keep the show running. So big thank you to Jessica Buckland, Beth Comer, Baron, Jeffrey Armando, Dave Rodriguez, Rod Lunsford, not evil in parentheses. <laughs> wait, wait. Um, not okay. the evil Rob Lunsford. Oh, oh Rob right. Lunsford. right, okay. As, okay. I forgot that we have both. <laughs> so That's the true. not evil Lunsford, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Giuseppe Salico, King of Salt, DK, Paul Simpson, Dick Flair, Benedict Bull, William Baggins, uh, younger brother of Bilbo, <laughs> um, Mosho Gairu and Josh Schaff. So thank you guys very much. Uh, if you guys created a YouTube channel using our intellectual property and brought joy to millions of people, we would not <laughs> copyright strike you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the sincerest well compliment that I can give. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> hey, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you do get a copyright strike, it's Flarek. How about yeah, that? Flarek. <laughs> he, he holds our intellectual property very near and dear to his heart. Uh, evidently. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the results of the Haru Basho, where, as mentioned before, the winner of the U Show was Sekiwake Kiribayama with a 12 and 3 record. This is his first career U Show win. He got that U Show by defeating the June U Show winner, Komosubi Daesho, in two consecutive matches on day 15. One to force a playoff, and the second being obviously the playoff match. This is the second career June U Show for Daesho. There are also three special prizes handed out this Basho uh, two Gino Show technique prizes going to the aforementioned Kiribayama and Daesho. This is the second career technique prize for both of these Rikshi and the third special prize overall for Kiribayama and the seventh special prize overall for Daesho. Uh, there were no Shukun Show Outstanding Performance awards handed out this basho but there was one kanto show fighting spirit award handed out that is to maigashira 14 keen boson getting his first career uh fighting spirit prize and his first special prize overall in his first basho in the makuuchi division he earned that by getting 11 wins in his debut and we all know if you get 10 wins in your debut that is a guaranteed kanto show fighting spirit prize uh, but, Flarek, there was some talk on Twitter about Midori Fuji, who started this Basho off on <clears> fire <throat> with 10 consecutive wins. He led the Yusho race by two wins after day 10. Was he snubbed of getting a special prize, in your opinion? It was put. It was made conditional for him. If he won his day 15 match, he'd get a f Fighting Spirit prize. Uh, okay. Seen some people saying, ah, no, he started 10 and 0. He should have gotten it. In your mind, is Midori Fuji getting snubbed here for not getting a special prize? I would say yes, because I he had a really cool kim Kimarite on day 10. Uh, he pulled out the Wari Dashi. That's kind of like mm -hmm. the forcing someone out with like their like forearm and such, which is something that's very rarely seen. I, I remember watching Tamiyama's video, he kind of gave her description, says it normally doesn't happen because it requires like a significant, a significant difference in strength uh, by the guy doing it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really, really cool to see, especially from a uh, gold small guy doing it as well. Uh, but other, but yeah, not getting that is, I think, a little, little bit sad. As for the fighting spirit, I am a okay with making that one conditional if that was the one they considered him for. Uh, like you said, he's been around. Like he's been around uh, for a while, so it's not like he's a debutante. Like he got ten, like he 
did show really good, like 10 equals an automatic uh, fighting spear prize. He also lost five in a row at the end. So I'm cool with like okay. saying like, you did pretty good. <laughs> if you can pull out one win from your free fall, we'll give you another one. Uh, so I'm okay with him losing that one. But I do think the Gino show, maybe they should have given him something with that. As a as a Takiyasu fan, I can say leading the Basho by two wins doesn't count for anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Takayasu has company in that club now. <laughs> yep. Was this one even worse, or was it like the same day where he was two wins ahead? I think no, Takayasu was I think even it was the later. same day. No, was I, same yeah. day. I think it was the same day for two wins ahead. Yeah. Either I way, think. either way, it is a slightly less exclusive club now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just going back to that point, Amidori Fuji, uh, there has never been a special prize awarded to somebody who went 0-5 in, in their final five days. Oh, there, there's ouch. been a few yeah. that got it after going 1-4 and four in their final five days, but nobody's got one after going 0-5 in, in their final five days, which I agree there probably shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, also, uh, critical to point out that Kagayaki now has fewer special prizes in 38 Makuuchi Basho than Keen Bozon has in <laughs> one Makuuchi Basho. So zero. Uh, if you take anything <laughs> from this podcast, let it be that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Does yeah, Keen so Bozon have like any other accolades? Yeah, he actually has oh, two yeah. lower division yeah, yeah, yeah. shows. So yeah. he already had more he, going he on. He already than had Kagayaki <laughs> beat, but. Now he's got one in Nakauchi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's got a got special more... prize and two lower division U show in nine total Basho of an entire career. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's done well. I think he already has more wins in a single tournament than Kagayaki has. Wins oh, in a single tournament, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and verify that. That's awesome. Yep. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> While Jake is doing that, let's let's talk a little bit more about how the remarkably U quick to verify that. Yep, it's <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotten 10 a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's talk about how the U show was won for Kiri Bayama. As we mentioned, after day 10, Midori Fuji, of all people, was alone in the lead at 10 and 0, two clear of Daesho, and three clear of eventual U show winner Kiri Bayama. After day 14, Midori Fuji had lost four in a row. He'd gone up against four consecutive Sanyaku Rikshi, uh, I believe, including Kiribayama. Did Kiribayama beat him? I don't remember. Um, but it was Wakamoto Haru, Wakatakakage, Hoshoryu, and Daesho. Uh, days 11 through 14 beat Midori Fuji. And so Midori Fuji, after leading by two on day 10, was completely eliminated by day 14. And what we were left with was Daesho show in the lead with 12 wins and Kiribayama won back with 11 wins going into the final day. So day 15, the Masubi no Ichiban, the final match of the day, exactly what you want to see. The U show is on the line. If Kiribayama wins, there's going to be a playoff between him and Daesho. If Daesho wins, he wins his second U show outright. Uh, so they were two fairly similar matches. I was match... going to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> match one, Daesho launched forward at the Tachiai like we saw him do all Basho. His Supari was absolutely on point and powerful this entire tournament. It proved to be powerful in this match as well. Forced Kiri Bayama back. He prevented Kiri Bayama from getting any sort of grip on Daesho's belt. Uh, but once Kiri Bayama's feet hit the Dawar Tawara, Daesho kept his thrusting attack going in a straightforward motion, which is unfortunate for him because Kiri Bayama was going sideways. Sidestep Daesho <laughs> and Daesho flew out of the doyo, forcing a playoff. And and Our if you'd playoff. like to have a recap for the playoff, <laughs> please rewind this podcast 30 seconds. <laughs> Basically, yeah. This yeah. time, Kiri Bayama went for a more uh, intentional, like, pulling technique here. But absolutely same, same thing happened it here. It was a much closer finish this time. The Gyoji ruled that Kiri Bayama won the match, but both of the men were flying out of the dojo at the same time. And I don't know if it was the first time that a mono -E had been called for a playoff match, but it's <laughs> going to be one of the very few times at the very least. But there was a <laughs> mono -E to figure out, did Daesho touch out first or did Kiri Bayama possibly touch first or did they go out at the same time? I love that the uh, on the second match, I believe it was the case. 
uh Kirabiyama was smart and like made it so there would be no actual argument about it because oh, no. <laughs> uh, his foot that landed outside the dough, he actually stepped on Daisho's hand. <laughs> Surely a very intentional move by Kiribayama to step Big on brand. Daisho's Clearly. hand. Mm -hmm. Like, nope, the body I'm control. not out of the ring yet. You are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was a mono E, but it was definitely one of those that was very clear cut about which way it was going to go. Yeah. Really yeah. pretty tough in real time. But yeah, having the slow mo video replay, it was like, yeah. But mm. yeah, I, like I said, I, I wasn't able to watch like the full the full replays. So I was like watching individual matches on, on Twitter and Instagram. And yeah, I did a double take when I saw like, I'm like, wait, did I just watch the same one again or something? Yeah. Or, <laughs> but yeah, it was, your eyes do not deceive you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, it was really interesting to see Dae show like clearly have that power advantage and then just kind of make pretty much the same mistake. Uh, not, I mean, not to take away from Kiri Bayama, but yeah, it, it was remarkably similar and it showed that, uh, yeah, even if daisho has got that power, Kiri Bayama was able to out strategize him both times. So yeah. it's uh yeah. yeah, it's very interesting in the case that Daesh will definitely want to play his game. It's like one of those things where if you're like an athlete or something, do you try to be an all rounder and try to like work on your weaknesses and so mm -hmm. like maybe you don't do well, or do you just get really good at the one thing you're good at? Mm -hmm. And Daesh will de definitely reminds me of like I'm gonna get really good at pushing and I'm gonna play the yeah. game where I'm just gonna push you <laughs> yes. out. And like it didn't work the first time, it says, well, this is the best chance I still got to win the whole entire thing. So yeah. I'm gonna try it again. His his pushing style doesn't necessarily look the same as Takakesho's, but like strategically from a big picture, it's it's kind of the same idea. Like I'm really yeah. good at pushing, so I'm gonna do that. I'm and I'm gonna drag I'm gonna yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna drag the other guy into my style of match. Do my brand of sumo, if you will. Oh, mm -hmm. oh hot take. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Kirbayama so, so had to answer both times. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and for Kiti Bayama, this U show for him is a fairly uh, rare occurrence in multiple ways. This is only the third Rikshi to win the U show in their Sekiwake debut, following in the footsteps of Futabayama and Wakataka Kage just one year prior. Uh, and he is the second ever Rikshi to win the U show after trailing by three wins. After day ten, the other being Haruma Fuji mm -hmm. in Aki twenty seventeen when we had our eleven and four U show winner. I think Haruma Fuji is probably still the only guy to and probably hopefully will be the only guy to <laughs> win a U show after having six wins on day <laughs> yeah. uh, ten. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Kiti Bayama is also the ninth Mongolian Rikshi to win the U show. Uh, so for Kiti Bayama, he was able to win his final eight consecutive matches. Uh, did get a little lucky in that he had a, a Fusen win over Wakataka Kage on day 14. So he got a little bit of a breather uh, between days 13 and 15. Wakataka Kage having apparently shattered his knee uh, in yeah. his match against Koto Nowaka. And uh, Wakataka Kage started off 0-5. Wakataka Kage then went, uh, I think, seven and one in his next eight matches. So Wakataka Kage was very hot at this time. So very fortunate for Kiribayama to miss him. Not saying Kiribayama was going to lose that match, just saying sometimes he get lucky. Would have been a tough one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but Jake, after this Basho, after two consecutive pretty good Basho from Kiribayama, 11 and four from Komosubi, a 12 and three from Sekiwake, has your impression of Kiribayama changed at all after this Basho or the past couple of Basho? I think I might phrase it as not really changed, but maybe progressed would be a better word. I, I feel like Kiribayama, I might toss Hoshoryu in the same sort of situation, but like I've kind of been like, waiting for them to arrive would that be a fair way to put it would you guys kind of agree with that like yeah. i i feel I like we've been that. we've been waiting for them to transition from like the the next generation to like the current generation uh and i i feel like this is this is a big step in 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 that regard where um you know kiribayama hoshore you are both like you know tricky uh they got like you, you know and uh quite an arsenal of moves of grappling techniques and stuff like that. And we've been seeing them gradually improve and improve. And yeah, this, this, uh, I, I guess I don't think that he's a different wrestler than he was before. I just think that he's, he's continuing to improve and this is kind of him, him arriving on the scene. 
And I'm, I'm hoping that what this, uh, I, I'm sure we'll get into it, but like getting, getting a potential Ozeki run or Ozeki promotion, uh, next time would be pretty cool. And that would be enough to make him like one of the guys to beat. I think that's kind of where we had a pretty strong feeling he could end up. So I'm pretty happy to see him there. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure that I did have him as like a, a future Ozeki. I'm not sure prior to these past couple Boshes that I kind of really saw him at that level. I think I kind of saw him as like, yeah, Komosubi Sekiwake, but I, I don't, I definitely believe now, uh, which is probably just going <laughs> to set, set me up for disappointment next month, but uh, <laughs> sure. But yeah, I, what I do you think it is? What do you think is that uh, changed your mind? Uh, an 11 win Basho followed up by a 12 win Basho. That's, <laughs> oh, okay. that's pretty nice. <laughs> the numbers. So, just, so less so. Winning more consistently. Winning. <laughs> okay, okay. Makes sense. He doesn't turn his back on his opponents anymore. Uh, yeah. uh, that's oh, something yeah. that's oh, happened yeah. over the last year. He you remember when that. he came up and he had like he had like ten percent of his wins by Okuri Dashi or something ridiculous? Like he kept trying to flip around. He kept trying yeah. to maneuver. <laughs> he just couldn't. He wasn't fast enough. But no, it, I, I I keep bringing up Hoshoryu because I think these guys are on a similar trajectory and have a have a similar style. But like, yeah, they're 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 the guys now. You know, along with mm-hmm. uh, both of the 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 two Waka brothers. I guess you could put, you could theoretically put wakamoto haru in that group too but like they're they're kind of now that second tier and they've kind of established themselves as uh you know not not the final boss but kind of like the mini bosses of sumo no all the final bosses were gone <laughs> this boss show yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> the game yeah. crashed after the mini boss you know yeah. you didn't actually get that mm-hmm. final battle speaking of the final uh bosses Flaric, is this yusho win by kiri bayama just a little bit of an asterisk at all in your mind, because as we mentioned, Terra no Fuji, Yokozuna gone, Takakesho, Ozeki gone, Wakataka Kage, he got the highest, next highest ranked guy, the highest ranked Sekiwake was gone by the time that Kiribayama got around to him. So Kiribayama didn't have to fight his theoretical three toughest opponents this Basho in a Basho that he won with a 12 and three record. Does that, uh, does that leave any question in your mind as to, uh, the legitimacy of this you show or is you fight who you go up against and if you win you win yeah i i think i know what you're asking but i i do have to respond to just the straight question of uh did he des- like was a legitimate win against the you show i definitely think it is oh, yeah. like he hmm. he beat the people up 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 against uh being injury free is honestly probably a little bit of a skill as rickshi as well and that and kind of involves the training that you do the the Heya that you jo- uh, join, I know some are actually trying to say, oh, this Heya has a lot of injuries, so maybe I won't join this Heya, kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That kind of comes into play. So uh, so I think, yeah, the fact that he was healthy, this Basho, and he'd be all the people in front of him, I think that, yes, it's a legitimate win uh, for you, show. I think that should be definitely congratulated. It's very amazing. Uh, but I think maybe what you're getting at is, like, is he one of the top final bosses yet? I, I think that definitely has to still be proven against that i think there is there are questions left to be asked about that and we'll see if we get that matchup sumo is sometimes weird to work maybe we uh, get a couple of retirements and maybe talk maybe you never get the terra no fuji matchup we'll see <laughs> but i was very impressed with his uh current current uh you should win i thought that was great yeah i'd, I'd really i really want everything to be at full strength next time because as it stands right now Kiribayama 0 and 9 against Teru no Fuji Ooh, wow. uh, and as it stands right now he is do 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 he's like 5 and 8 against Takakesho that's better uh, it's better <laughs> um but two guys that he has very bad records and I I'm not trying to put his Yusho win down in any way shape or form i think he performed great this basho i think if he went up against takakesho probably would have beaten takakesho this basho he was doing really well um partly because was... yeah he was absolutely on fire yeah he was on yeah. fire <laughs> that has to be a counterpoint too yeah yeah absolutely speaking of him being on fire with 11 wins and 12 wins in the past couple <laughs> of basho mac he has 31 wins over three basho his last two were a junior show and a U show should Kiri Bayama already have been promoted to Ozeki after this Basho, in your opinion? 
He came in as kind of a dark horse, in my opinion, for this tournament. Um, I know the numbers are kind of favoring Hoshoryu when I was last talking about him. And Kiribayama definitely put up or shut up in this case. But he's got to prove it one more time. He has to have another stellar performance as a Sekiwake Jun Yusho. Love if he could cap it off with a Yusho with a little bit stronger of a record. Maybe 13 to 14. Don't know if it's going to happen. But he needs another solid performance as a Sekiwake before I think an Ozeki promotion is a lock. And let's let's talk about Ozeki hopefuls because Chairman Hakaku did release a statement about some Rikshi that are going to be reaching for that Ozeki promotion in the next couple of Basho. So just to set the table a little bit, we got Kiribayama and Daesho both had 12 win Bashos this Basho, both of them having two consecutive double digit Bashos. Um, Daesho might be a little hampered because his first one was from the Maigashira ranks where he got 10 and 5 record in January. We also have Wakamoto Haru who got 11 wins in his second Basho as a Komosubi. He should be Sekiwake next Basho and he has 9 followed with 11. And then you also have Hoshoryu who bounced back from his ankle injury that he suffered back in January. Uh, he got 10 wins for the second time as a Sekiwake. Uh, and so uh, Chairman Hakaku got these statements translated uh, by Pat Patricia Dobashi on Twitter. Uh, Chairman Hakaku said, I feel that Kiribayama has grown in stature. If he wins 10 or more matches next Basho, his promotion is assured. All Which right. I think this is the first time in a long time that we've gotten a statement of like, this is what somebody needs to do to win Ozeki. Because yeah. you look at like Mitaki Yumi and Shodai's runs, like <laughs> it wasn't, it was like eight followed by 11. So nobody's really taking them seriously in that yeah. third Basho. show. Yeah. And then they got 13 and two and like, okay, yeah, fine. I guess whatever. Uh, <laughs> but with a nice solid 11 followed by 12, they could be just like, all right, the math adds up the math maths. If you get 10, that's 33 <laughs> over three, buddy, we need you. You, you got a junior promoted. show, you got a U show. All right, come on, do it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of nice that like we might for the first time in a while get somebody promoted for doing like pretty good three times as yeah. opposed to like <laughs> doing it as opposed to like blowing everything out of the water in a third in a third of three or something, you know? Yeah. That's kind of funny to me. I mean, I, I, I keep forgetting like Terra no Fuji because Terra no Fuji, his second Ozeki run was 13, 11, 12. So that was also a very <laughs> yeah. easy, like slam dunk. Yeah. You get to 10 in that third one. Nobody was shocked. There. Yeah. But <laughs> no. I, I feel like that, yeah, that one doesn't count in some way. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was Ozeki for what, two tournaments or yeah, something like he, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that one felt like a coronation <laughs> rather yeah, than like a, a, a mm -hmm. accomplishment, you know? Yeah. Uh, referencing Daesho, Chairman Akaku said, I hope he too will do his best to become an Ozeki in the next tournament. So they're not closing the door on possible Daesho. He puts together another 12, 11 wins. Maybe we get Ozeki Daesho in the next Basho. Hmm. Uh, and then Hakaku and Sato Gatake, who are the head of the refereeing committee that handles promotions, admit that Hoshoryu and Wakamoto Haru are in the mix for the next Ozeki. I don't think they're in the mix next Basho, but they put together another good Basho. I think uh, in July, their time will come to kind of put up or shut up. They, so, they could be in the case where a, a big, a huge third tournament like coming out of the blue, like that's Mataki yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's that's pro probably on the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. the way that the math maths, and we'll get more into this on the preview, the way that the math maths for these guys is Kiribayama, 10 wins, 33 over three. Daesho, um, 11 wins, 33 over three. Wakamoto Haru, 13 wins, 33 over three. Hoshoryu, Zensho Yusho, 15 and 0. Yeah. <laughs> three <and> three. <laughs> well, not impossible, improbable, but not impossible. There is a non zero chance we get four new Ozeki <laughs> right for <after> the main. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had one other one other note. I, I like the translation. Like I, I completely understand exactly what they're trying to say. But like I feel that Kiribayama has grown in stature. I yeah, he, I caught he's that now too. of appropriate height that we may consider him for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I mean, I like I said, I know exactly what they're trying yeah. to say. But I just I funny. just like that this is positivity. Have we seen any positivity coming out of this damn committee? Uh, the quote does <laughs> not, not say that while. he was smiling. So okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But still, it's like, wait, this is positive. These are positive vibes. 
He These are way did... too many hopefuls. <laughs> yeah, way too many. <laughs> he probably did like more of an encouraging like hmm rather than like the normal hmm. <laughs> ah, yes, distinct, distinct differences. <laughs> Uh, so we, we've brought up Wakamoto Haru a little bit. Uh, uh, this guy just doesn't stop. Um, <laughs> but, but get, I just, how did the, I don't understand. The guy <laughs> debuting in the top division at 28 years old is now like on the cusp of being promoted to Ozeki. <laughs> yeah. um, his brother, Wakataka Kage, who we've kind of been, ever since he won the U show back in Haru, we've kind of been like, all right, buddy, come on. Let's put this together. Let's get to Ozeki. Uh, Wakataka Kage had to pull out, as we mentioned, on day 14 after a possible very serious knee injury. Uh, his medical certificate cites damage to the ACL meniscus, which are two very concerning things uh, to cite damage to because depending on the severity of that damage, that could be a year plus sort of injury. Uh, and it also says, I think the most concerning thing that the certificate says is that it requires three months of treatment. And I feel oh like my. if your medical certificate says anything more than two months, then you're on your deathbed. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think you, you summed it up perfectly when you said his knee exploded. His knee like literally exploded. Like Jesus. It's it's what it sounds like. This this could potentially really end any hopes for I don't I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves um because Wakataka Kage could show up next Basho and get <laughs> 10 wins. But yeah. the way that it currently sounds, it sounds bad. It sounds like with saying he needs at least three months of treatment sounds like he could very well miss the next hopefully does miss the next basho if that's what his knee yeah. need yeah no kidding. coming in to force it um but even disregarding those injuries uh jake who is better right now wakataka kage or wakamoto haru yes assuming all knees are unexploded yes uh definitely still wakataka kage for me um, I feel like I don't, I don't want to like say it's like fluky, but like, I don't trust Wakamoto Haru yet, I guess is <laughs> how I'd say it. A year and a half fluke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. hey, we, had, we had Ozeki Shodai. So that exists. Oh yeah. That is a thing. <laughs> but... Year and a half fluke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think that Wakataka Kage, um, like it's, it's just so much more proven that he can beat all the guys at the top when, when, uh, when he has to face them. Let me bring up uh, his. Oops, that was the wrong one to click. I wanted to bring up Wakamoto Haru's eleven and four, and just see who he won and lost to. Um, he he beat Daisho. I've already actually got that up. He beat Daisho. Sure. He did lose to the uh, two Sekiwake ranked ahead of him that he fought. He lost right. to Kiribayama and to Hoshoryu. Uh, his other losses were to Shodai. A little bit of a resurgent Shodai. This yeah, that's not a bad yeah. loss. And Mitake Yumi, who most Bashos that that sounds like okay, you lost to Mitake Yumi. Who sure, cares? no biggie. Th this Basho, that's kind of a concerning loss. That was a biggie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, all, all in all, like a lot of his, um, like in in the actual like quality of the match, um, like that's something that we are certainly like much less um, credentialed to speak on. But like the the it, specifically the quality of the matches, I feel like he's not as. Wakataka Kage, when he's winning, it's because he he's in control generally. He's and pushing you forward and out. Yeah, mm. whether it's a push or whether it's a throw or whatever, it's like he's implementing sumo onto you. And Wakamoto Haru, a lot of the time, I get more of the vibe. It's like, well, I guess I'll try this, and it works a lot of the time. He um, he, he might be the Tawara defense king. Wakamoto yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's definitely a, a number of matches that like. We're, we're just a centimeter one way or the other that that uh, you know could have done it not just this basho but i think in general that that tends to be the case for him more than his brother but like we're, i'm still kind of splitting hairs because both of these <laughs> guys are clearly very good whatever whatever uh waka takakage has been learning being in the top division has definitely transferred over to the other people in his stable bringing up uh you know bringing up the other guys that he trains with and i think that's really cool um but yeah, I mean, certainly if you do take into account that injury, Wakamoto Haru is way closer to Ozeki <laughs> and and Fair. probably Fair will enough. be for like, you know, a half a year minimum, I I would guess, based yeah. on the news we've heard. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, kind of our last question about kind of the top of the Bonske area. Uh, we got a question from one of our patrons, Giuseppe Salico. Uh, he said that it, it seems that the field has gotten weaker, at least from the number and the records of Yokozuna and Ozeki's. Do we as a podcast think this is the case? If so, why? Um, and I would definitely argue that I – I think so. Um, at least the records wise, we're seeing so many twelve and three mm-hmm. U shows, uh, and I don't, I don't think that's the norm. I think typically you're looking more thirteen to fourteen and one sort of thing. Uh, but I don't know how much of that is skewed from the time when Hakuho was being dominant and he was just the one putting up all those records, uh, or and what it was like before that i haven't really done the research into that but it, it does seem that the the top isn't as top that is very clear uh the top hasn't separated itself uh especially looking at the recent absence of Terra no fuji yeah Th- this is a super hard question because like you could if all you're looking at is like the records you could uh, you could potentially say that this is an extremely strong field because the guys are all really good and able to beat each other. And maybe there was just nobody else good when Hakuho was a wrestler. Obviously, that's not true. It, it's, you know, we're we're talking like different shades of gray here. But like, I, I do mm-hmm. think that Hakuho being so much more good than the next best guy uh, certainly made it <laughs> seem. It, yeah, it's a completely different era. Yeah, no, it, right? it is totally. Yeah, it's, it's super I, I, hard to judge. Yeah, I will say I remember hearing someone kind of give some kind of uh, argument against Hakuho's domination was on his way up when he was kind of firstly became Yokozuna. That's when Asasuru as peak was kicked out of the Sumo Association. So mm-hmm. like one of his main rivals, like he didn't really have to challenge him during that time, during that kind of crossover because Asasuru was like the earlier one. Yeah. So that, that, that's just something that came across to my mind when we talked about Hakuho. Doesn't yeah. necessarily belong to this conversation so continue Jake. well no continue. no i mean you're you're right but like what what if this era is just as like if you're looking at it uh holistically what if this era is just as talented except for there's no haku top top you know yeah. like how do you tell the difference how do you tell the difference in quality of sumo and i think that's purely qualitative that you know you got to like look at the sumo see what looks like good sumo what looks like bad sumo and obviously that's a lot harder but it's not you know objectively impossible or anything either so i don't know i i do think that there is definitely something to be said that if you have a hakuho that is that much better than everybody that he similar to what we were talking about with the waka brothers having somebody that good to challenge yourself against definitely helps other people strive to get better so there's i think there's probably something to be said for that I, I will say, at least with the question of the field, I think I agree with you, Jake, that the top top, we kind of don't have, we might have that in Teru Nofuji and when he's been around, he has like the body type and like the uh, the skill to really dominate pretty much anyone like on the match. So that, that's why we can really see him. He's probably the Hakuho of the time. And that's mm-hmm. why he's Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. But looking at the Bonsuke, I see three different Sekiwakis and I see uh, Wakamoto Haru, or maybe Daesh will pushing to be a Sekiwaki as well. I, I'm not a Bonds K. We'll have four Kiribayama, Hoshoryu, Daesho, Wakamoto Haru. Oh, yeah. Cool. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, I think that does speak to the field, like maybe the midfield actually doing really, really well. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we have so many, uh, Richie that have raised as far as they can go without being consistent, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maybe yeah, the very so, tippy top tier is not as good as it used to be, but like the upper middle tier is better than it used to be. I don't know. Yeah, I, I bet yeah, you can yeah. make that argument. No, yeah, but, I and, think that's what I'm getting across. No, and I'd, I'd agree with you there, Flick, because looking looking at the records, looking at what else is going on down here, I mean, even though Shodai dropped down to an M1, still went 10 and 5. You, you've got a little bit of uh, disparity, but Abi, 9 and 6. Go next person down, Midori Fuji. And he led the tournament. M5. I mean, it's they're they're dispersed, but the tippy top still isn't quite defined. You still have solid performers in the mid to upper ranks, so it's I, it's the quality. I would say at the tip top, like we were saying earlier, definitely isn't there. But there's still there's there's a crucible action going on in the mid to upper tier, and sure. I, I like what I'm seeing from that. 
Yeah. I think I'll... this Basho especially, we kind of saw what I think people want to see is like we had two Sanyaku Rikshi with 12 wins, another with 11, and then mm -hmm. another with 10. All of the wins were being soaked up by the upper guys instead of being more dispersed throughout the Bonske. Exactly what I was looking at. Yeah. I, th I think one thing I really do enjoy is that we have a wide variety of different styles of sumo. It's not oh, like so we have is. a yeah. bunch of like Yotsu like grappling sumo or a bunch of like Oshi like pushing sumo. We have like a good mix of the both, and they're finding ways to be successful. And then we have a Tobizaru who just does weird shit. Yeah, whatever he <laughs> yeah. does. Or you have an Ura I would say that just like, goes low every time. <laughs> yeah. So I would definitely say from like a entertainment and like thing, I I love that there's so many different styles of stuff, which is really good. And mm -hmm. like I do think, like I said, I I think I'm convincing myself more and more. I think that the midfield is actually really shown to be very strong. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, I agree. Last point I wanted to make was that the the most the recent couple Basho here, maybe the last three or so, has felt like good, fun parody. Like parody as, as in like, you know, it, it, there's on some level, there's a whole bunch of guys that could win the tournament. And I, I in, in like a good way. Whereas there's also the bad kind of parody where it's like, well, whatever, it's impossible to predict because <laughs> Tokushore, you could just like kind of stumble his way into winning. <laughs> you know, and I think there's there's pluses and minuses to having like a field that's less uh, less dominant, uh, some guys dominant over others. Um, but I, I feel like recently it's been a it's been in a fun way. There's been a lot of parody. And and just to speak to that parody before we move on, the last eight Yusha winners are yeah. all unique <laughs> Yusha winners. And I don't I don't know if that's happened in subo history before where we've had eight consecutive you show won by eight different people if it has happened it's been a goddamn long time <laughs> yeah i'm not kidding uh i have a uh, some evidence to back your point jake of uh Parody. speak for yourself on like whether or not having the random mid bonza k oh. tokushori winning <laughs> right being bad. Sure. but i get what you're saying not uh, mid Midor k the absolute goddamn <laughs> bottom of the box <laughs> i was about to say <laughs> uh we have midori fuji who went 10 to know the first uh 10 days and then like the last days he faced wakamoto haru wakataka kage hoshori daisho shodai like people in the sanyaku and the joy and he lost every single match there is a clear <laughs> yeah. skill difference yeah. of the people <laughs> at the top there of Bonske. <laughs> there, yeah. There's a tier. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, a tier. Yeah. All right. So let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about some impressive newbies that might look to be joining that upper tier uh, sooner rather than later. We had Keen Boson, as we mentioned earlier, going 11 and 4, getting a couple of impressive wins in there. I would say a win over Takayasu, a win over Abi in your debut. Uh, Basho is going to be very impressive for Keen Boson. And you also had Hoku Seho, who went 9 and 6 in his debut, Basho. Uh, so, Mac, after both of these guys' first Basho in the top division, who do you think has better prospects of kind of breaking into that elite tier where uh, Midori Fuji, who was running rough shot over the field, ah, you run into me, now you're going down. Now you're re meeting the real talent. Which one mm. of those two do you think has more potential to make it to that tier? I know the recency, it would be with Kinboza. I mean, obviously he did fantastic with 11 and four, but my money is actually on Hoku Seho. I'm looking at, just the the losses that he took against Ichi Nojo, Dai Shoho, Takanosho, uh, looks like Chiyoshoma, Takara Fuji, and Nishiki Fuji. These guys aren't pushovers. I mean, especially Ichi Nojo. Really hard to push that guy over. Anyway, literally the, yeah. <laughs> the wins that he was able to pull out here against his other opponents, like I I I like what I saw from him. I like the patience that I saw from Hoku Seho. He just took his time to win these matches. And I think as that develops, his ring sense develops and his abilities develop, I think he's going to be more of a monster than Ken Boza. Yeah. And I, I think to what makes Hokuseho's nine and six record more impressive to me is that based on his Tachi eye, he's fighting every <laughs> match from behind. Also, yeah. yes. <laughs> also, yes. <laughs> he, he has to, he has to do a come from behind maneuver in every single match. And to end up nine and six, when you put yourself in that, that position, ain't bad. that's yeah. not bad, but there, there was, 
I think the match that stood out to me the most in a negative way for Hokuseo was against Takata Fuji, where yeah. <laughs> like he instantly intentionally just gave up his entire midsection and belt to Takata Fuji so that he could get that overhand reach onto Takata Fuji's belt. Takata, uh, I mean, as old and slow as Takata Fuji is getting, <laughs> you give a veteran free reign access your to your belt. belt. Choose how you want to what wrestle. to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the way that you phrase that question is very important to the answer because like who has more potential? I would agree it's Hokuseho because he has so many glaring holes that yes. could potentially be filled. <laughs> and he still managed to And he still and does six. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Kin Bozan, like if you were to say, who do you think is more likely to reach the Sanyaku first or something? If that was the phrasing, I'd probably say Kin Bozan because his style seems more complete and he and and for him to improve that much would be more of like refining and practicing against the top guys. Whereas Hokuseho, it's like you gotta just like sit down and watch tape and learn how sumo works first, <laughs> right? Like just be faster at the Tachi. <laughs> not even like so be big. faster, but just like expect it. Yeah. Like right? Yeah. Like yeah. Just know Don't what know what is coming. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it, but yeah, I I agree. They're they're they both they they both looked pretty cool, pretty fun uh, wrestlers that I'm excited to see where they go. Yeah, it, it's nice having guys like that in the top division instead of uh, Chiyomaru or Aqua or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Somebody where you know Azumaru. where they're going. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you're fairly confident that you'll understand their ceiling. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a little bit since we had some blue chips like this, and uh, and Ochi is kind of the same boat. It's like really excited for where they're going now absolutely and and coming up in the next basho debuting at makushta 10 we're gonna have uh nakamura nakamura yeah, yeah. daiki nakamura uh this this guy is a uh, famously uh he uh won more tournaments than ochi during amateur and so he actually starts higher on the bonzake uh yeah. because of that I believe the so. requirement to start at Makushta 15 is you got to win like an amateur uh, like Yokozuna or tournament, something in Japan. Um, to start at Makushta 10, you've got to win two of those. Uh, Nakamura's won five. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <geez. laughs> yeah, and Dude, I don't know if it counts. Dude's overqualified. I don't know if it counts in the same list, but the World Games uh, that were in Alabama this last summer, some of the oh, some of our so American scary. team members went there too, but like, it was it was it was like watching a dad wrestle children, you know, watching oh, him yeah. go against like the rest <laughs> of the world's best wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I'm very psyched for him. He he uh, he's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, add him to that list of like red hot blue chip prospects that, you know, we we really have super high expectations for. It's yeah. nice to be kind of churning out a few of those. It feels like it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a bit. I guess yeah. probably <laughs> debut of Hoshoryu and would be like oh, yeah. the last sure. kind of like big prospect. And Oho, Oho. as well. Oho was another one. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if Oho can kind of live up to that uh, in the future. Yeah. Um, Please. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be nice. Uh, some quick hits here. Uh, Zone of Death finally living up to its name we're finally going to be kicking out more people that were in the top like four migashira ranks uh rather than yeah. just keeping them yeah. all the same <laughs> names around so in through the ranks migashira one through four only two out of eight rikshi had a winning record <laughs> four of the six that had losing records had 10 or more losses including <laughs> yeah. tamawashi ryuden mitake yumi and meisei uh Flaric, we mentioned him briefly but is mitake yumi broken <laughs> <sighs> he's well he he uh he d did the grave mistake of uh surviving past his 30th birthday and still trying to do sports <laughs> <laughs> when so will yes. people learn rookie move <laughs> <laughs> The foolish person. It is an uh, uphill battle. Uh, now, he definitely looked uh, off pace from what we've seen in the past. Uh, like, just his power wasn't there. So I would not be surprised if he's fighting some kind of injury. Uh, and I, we'll see. Hopefully he bounces back next Basho and gets back up to the joy because he's definitely shown he belongs there. Yeah, I, I was going to agree there. It it didn't feel like wear and tear slowly, uh, slowly declining for him. It felt like mm -hmm. something was like a 
step change worse. Yeah, it was like a steep cliff after he yeah. made Ozeki. His Very first steep. Basho as Ozeki got 11 and 4 record. And then the year since, just losing record, losing record, losing record. And especially yeah. like a bad one like this against, uh, even without the top two guys managing to only get those four wins is doesn't doesn't feel right. It feels like there's mm-hmm. something acutely wrong rather than just the fact ju- rather than just the fact that he's now an old geezer <laughs> and is getting social security checks. Looking yeah. at the last two years for Mitaki Yumi. So if we look two years back, his records were ten and five, eight and seven, nine and six, eleven and four, thirteen and two, eleven and four. So that was two years ago to right. one year ago. This past year, six and nine, uh, two, five, and eight, uh, four and eleven, six and nine, seven and eight, four and eleven. Something, something happened. There was a switch. Yeah. My my guess is some form of injury. He's not getting treated. That that that, that would be my. He's not getting the proper treatment for some sort of injury. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's lingering and nagging at him. That's concerning. With the it sounded like all. Did he have like losing records all of last year? Is that what yes. you're, is that what yep. you're saying? Six wow. consecutive losing records. Yeesh. I did not know it was that bad. Yep. It is gruesome. Yep. Uh speaking of other former recent former Ozeki, uh Shodai got ten wins after falling <laughs> out of the Sanyaku <laughs> ranks. Jake, how annoying are the uh future Ozeki Shodai conversations gonna be at every single time that he pops off a basho fairly fairly annoying i think <laughs> like he, he even got he even went 10 and 5 once as an ozeki uh before his two <laughs> losing records that dumped him out he's just volatile and i i think that i it whatever miracle allowed him to get three really good ones in a row actually i take it back only two really good ones show. in a row because yeah, in the east show because <laughs> one first, was an eight and seven the first of his ozeki run was an eight and seven yeah exactly Jeez. so whatever whatever uh sorcery that was i don't i don't think that we're gonna have it again but i also do think that we'll probably have 10 or 11 wins out of him at some point here and there <laughs> whatever he's just volatile yeah uh another injury note oh no show had to pull out on day eight uh, with a four and four record, I don't remember what the cited injury was for him, but he had to pull out mid basho as well. Uh, also, uh, another further annoying bit for me: uh, Tsudagisho and Mitoryu have become quite adept at winning their <laughs> final match <laughs> to avoid demotion back to Jurio, uh, yeah. <laughs> further blocking the promotion of promising young Rikshi. Uh, this time, like their Ichi prob- Nojo. <laughs> Asanoyama. They're they're well, those guys no, those are, two are yeah, you don't gotta worry well. about them. Those guys uh, are all right. It, it's guys like Shona Naumi and Gonoyama who could very likely uh be on the uh still on the Jurio end of the Bonske due to ruthless bastards like Tsudugisho and Mitoryu <laughs> not relenting <laughs> their tenuous at best grip on the Makauchi division. Mm-hmm. Um any other Rixie, you guys want to know, or just anything else from this basho that you guys want to point out? I have uh, one personal one to uh, Hakioi Sumo News uh, regarding my pick as for Bushozan as my chump. Told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> yeah. Bushozan also debuted alongside Kim Bozan and Hokuseho. Unlike them, he could only get to five wins. He will be going back down to Jurio. If I remember <laughs> the bold predictions thread on Twitter properly, uh, Hakioi, uh Sumo News and Stats uh, predicted a Bushozan Zencho Yu show. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> He, we yeah. might be mentioning him later in our bad predictions. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. No, clearly the inferior of the Ozon brothers. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flarek, Jake, any other guys that you wanted to mention? No, I'm good. All right. Uh, so let's talk about all of our lower division Yusho winners down in Jurio. We had Ichi Nojo uh, getting a 14 and one record, his second Jurio Yusho. Uh, he beat Asanoyama and Ochi. His only loss was to Gonoyama. Uh, 
Fun little stat. Five of the last 10 Jury OU show have been won by a Rickshie that was suspended for breaking COVID protocols. <laughs> <laughs> We've got oh, one for Abi, two for Ryuden, one for Asanoyama, and now one for Ichi Nojo. Incredible. So that should be the last of the COVID protocol breakers kind of cycling through we've got them all back in the top division next <laughs> all right show. come on <laughs> jurio will finally belong back to the jurio rickshi there's <laughs> some there's some poor bastard like similar to kagiyaki who has no other accolades in his career and he could have had a jurio you show at one point but no <laughs> i blame you covid and all your rule breakers uh oh. this basho had ichi nojo nasa yama not existed go no yama would have been your you show winner with 11 and 4 record there you go <laughs> uh in makushta liuo uh, this is his first career you show. He's been around for 11 years since he was 18 years old when he made his debut. Uh, he spent most of that time in San Donme and Joni Don, only making it to Makushta for the first time in 2020, eight years after his debut. So he finally got his first career you show in any division. Uh, in San Donme, Toshun Yu uh, got his first career San Donme you show. He is 23 years old, and this is his fifth career Basho. So he is on the up and up. Uh, in Joni Don Suguro, uh, he's 25 years old. This is his first career Joni Don Yusho. It's also his first Basho in Joni Don as he debuted in San Don May at the end of 2021, made it to Makushta in three Basho before getting injured and missing a Basho. He then went in six, he then went six and one in San Don May, the following Basho to get back into Makushta before missing the next three Oof. Basho. And so this was his first Basho back from missing six months of action and the first time he ever participated in the Joni Don division. Hopefully those injuries aren't too bad because if he did that well at the beginning, he, you know, high potential to get up higher. Yeah, any any Sandanme Tsukidashi uh, has got potential. Keen Bozon was a Sandanme Tsukidashi. Mm. Uh, Wakataka Kake, Sandanme Tsukidashi. Uh, and Jono Kuchi, Asahakuryu, uh, 24 year old, won his first career at Basho. Big, big uh, Basho for the Ryu's. Uh, I see we got yeah. three, <laughs> three U show winners with that's Ryu Dragon, right? Somewhere in their name. Yeah. Asa Hakuryu is also like prime creator wrestler kind of name. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like uh, that one. Dive in a little bit deeper into Jurio. Uh, if you were watching Jurio, it was a tough watch. If you're for your favorite uh, former Ozeki Georgian Tochi Noshin, uh, he had to pull out of the previous Basho with a shoulder injury. Was very clearly not over that injury. This Basho, there was one match where he literally had to give up in the middle of the dojo and walk like four or five steps backwards out of the dojo because uh, that injury flared up. Everybody assumed he was going to go Kyujo. This is going to be the last we saw of Tochi Noshin, but no, he stuck it out the final four or five days, very clearly fighting with one arm and still managed to win two or three of those matches what? on the back end. Uh, I didn't know that. That's wild. He is yeah. still, uh, he's still <laughs> horse strong. Like he's, he's still yeah. a big guy, but uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that it was painful to see that one match where he, yeah, it, it looked it almost looked like a dislocation or something. That's what was I like, thought. That's what that's why her hanging injury. was. Yeah. 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 Cause that arm was just hanging as he was basically like running away. Yep. That was hard to watch. On OGI watch, because I think until uh proven otherwise, we need to talk about OGI. Uh he goes ten and five in his Sekitori debut. Uh he put up excellent fights against Ichi Nojo and especially Asanoyama on day mm. 15. If you can find it somewhere in the depths of the internet, try yep. to find the OGI versus Asanoyama match on day 15. It was a great bout. He ultimately lost that match, uh, but it was still a fantastic fight from OGI. Uh, I think it's fun to point out. He was never pushed out of the dojo. He's a, he's a powerful little boy. Uh, his losses were due to a Hitaki <laughs> Komi slapdown. He lost three consecutive matches due to Tsuki Otoshi, just kind of like throwdowns. Uh, and then and a and a Watson, yeah, thrust down. And then an Watson Nage throw from Asanoyama. Uh, so Ochi, very impressive Sekitori debut. And I believe with those 10 wins, this is something else I want to track for as long as it's a record. Uh, he has 17 wins in his first two Basho, which has 
there's no way that it's not a record. If he's the first guy yeah. to make it into uh secondary status in his second career Basho, there's nobody who's had an opportunity to fight more than 14 matches. And yeah, first two <laughs> he's mathematically three ahead of even the best possible second place. Yeah. So, We'll we'll keep track of that. We'll keep track of how long Ochi has the most wins through however many Basho <laughs> yeah. of his career. There's got to think... be a sumo DB query we can do to like confirm <laughs> that or something. Yeah. Uh, and then something that I kind of feel bad about not pointing out on the preview or midway episode. Uh, but Tomo Kaze returned to active secutory status for the first time since November of 2019. Wow. So there's probably a decent amount of people listening to this that got into sumo after Tomokaze uh, was injured and fell out. But Tomokaze was once the next big thing. Uh, so this guy will just give a brief uh, rundown of Tomokaze. Uh, he debuted in May 2017 at the age of 2022 uh he won a lower division u show in two of his first three basho i believe uh joni don and sandanme he then spent only five basho in makushta getting a winning record in each of those basho before being promoted to jurio once he hit jurio he was only there for a brief amount of time getting 10 plus wins in both tournaments while he was in jurio and then he made his makuuchi debut and he had a winning record in his first three makuuchi basho launching him up to the Maigashira three rank in just his fourth Basho as a Makuuchi Rikshi, where he did get his first losing record once he got into the zone of death, but it was still only a seven and eight record for Tomokaze, and he still picked up uh, uh, Keen Boshi for the second consecutive Basho after beating Kakuryu for the second consecutive Basho. Yeah, he was still like he was still very much on fire. Like that it was still quite a run that he was yeah. on. And then in his fifth Makuuchi Basho in November 2019, while still at his career high rank of Maigashira 3, he didn't drop down the rankings after a 7 and 8 record and on his day 2 match of the November 2019 Basho, he landed probably the worst probably the worst injury we've seen in a doyo match yeah he he uh, landed like we've seen a guy who died second se up there it's one it's of the worst there. injuries <laughs> yeah. i'm not sure if i saw that match personally no i mean yeah but but yeah it was it was the last time that i remember there being a huge flurry of uh lower the doyo serious talk like it's kind of become a meme since then but like Mm -hmm. This this uh, there was a stretch of like two or three Basho where people had like pretty substantial injuries because of the race doyo and mm -hmm. Tomokaze was chief among them by far. He was the worst. Yeah, he was yeah. he he basically landed with a straight leg and and, and then, then it wasn't straight anymore. and then it and then it stopped straight. being straight. But like, yeah, yeah. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't bent to absorb the <laughs> impact. And yeah, he yeah. ended up going out on the comically large wheelchair. Yeah, that's so, uh, a, a fun like interlude I've uh, talking fun? to. Yeah, what's the segue just, here? <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, not really that like segue. Yeah, I'll try to make this quick. But I just remember I was chatting with uh one of my my coaches at gym, and he was big about kind of how the weight room, the some the bad habits you get by doing too much weight room stuff is uh you sometimes put too much weight on the back heel, and you can like sometimes when you land you don't land like on your toes and you don't absorb the impact and you can kind of land straight thing that can cause you land straight leg and that can cause a lot of injuries because of that. And like his big thing was like his gym set up so where it's less weight room based, it's more like a high intensity, like uh kind of more movement that's more athletic movement for for your sport. So it's a lot of side to side shuttles and some other kind of random stuff like that, like sure. jumping and like ten yard sprints and stuff like that. So it would be it's kind of like the whole straight obviously the Dohyo thing did not help at all because you know you're falling from a much higher thing, but it's like, yeah, I always kind of wonder with the, the amount of weight room I know is very prevalent in the sumo, whether or not that is helping or not. Right. Anyways, that's my, that's my little segue. We can go back to what you're saying, Jake. <laughs> no, that, that, that's super applicable. Like, and, and especially if you were to like add two feet to every fall that you took, of course yeah. it would make things worse. Right. Mm. Like there's, there's debate about whether it's, I mean, most of the debate is like memes now, I guess, but like there, there's, there's still a perfectly logical argument to be made that like the, a lower dohyo would have fewer injuries and you can argue whether or not that's worth it, but like it is objectively worse 
to fall two feet further. Yeah. And Tomokaze paid that price hard. Yeah. Or at least if you do train, like train for it, which I'm not sure if uh, Hayas are doing. Because I know for like, a, mm. for me, like increasing a, like my vertical, what I do is box jump negatives where I stay on top of a tall box and I just step off and I just practice absorbing that force like with my knees, like ah. landing in a quarter squat and stuff like that. And I just don't, I, I, that, I probably that's like the last thing that uh, Rick Shearer doing the train. So sure. But how many know. angles are you falling off on that box? Because that's <laughs> that's the thing. You can kind of get a very. I think the 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 scenarios you get in with sumo is probably very unpredictable. Yeah. And training for that is probably something that's maybe not as useful. The that's the next really level of that is to have a four hundred pound man angrily push you off the box instead of just jumping <laughs> down on your own. <laughs> that's land on true. your feet now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, for Tomokaze. Very bad landing, basically. I think this is the origin of when we say somebody's knees exploded. We started saying that with Tomokaze because his knee exploded. Yeah. It was uh, he, every one of the things in there is yes. was torn. He missed six consecutive Basho and then made his return in March of 2021 in Joni Don. Uh, he made it back up to Makushta after four Basho uh, between Joni Don and San Danme. He then spent the next eight Basho in Makushta before finally making it back to the paid ranks for the first time in almost three and a half years, where this Basho Tomokaze got an eight and seven record. He's now 28 years old. I don't think he'll unfortunately probably ever be able to be uh, the Rikshi that he initially looked like he was going to be. Uh, but it's, it's nice to see him back in the paid ranks, uh, probably uh shoe in for comeback of the year in our sumo award show uh, oh, sure. at the end of the year. Uh, but with that, we're going to take a quick break. We've got a, Get to our GSB belt, our prediction series. Jake's got to find out what his punishment is and then bold predictions and other stuff. If you enjoy the Grand Sumo Breakdown podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. Support the show on Patreon and check out our blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Also, watch us on YouTube. Welcome back, and for the millionth time in a row, the belt did what the belt does. <laughs> so the Are GSP belt. I uh, Maybe. We'll see. It depends a little <laughs> bit on the Bonds K luck. And I bet Ryan's going to have a comment here, but let me, uh, let glimmer me, glimmer of hope. There's a glimmer of hope, but yeah. So, uh, the GSB belt, uh, for, for the millionth time in a row, this Basho, it started back down in, uh, or wait, no, excuse me. In this, in this Basho, it started in Jurio for the first time because Ochi, I got yeah, that Ochi unprecedented, uh, that unprecedented leap up to Jurio in his very first, uh, his very first, uh, promotion. Um, but he lost to Tama Shoho, who lost to Chio Sakai, and uh, now we're back in Makushta. Dang it! <laughs> yep. So Chio Sakai actually held on to it, and he was at Makushta 2 West. Uh, so had he held on to it the whole Basho, he would have been a shoo-in uh, at like a 6-1 and one or whatever to get promoted back up to Jurio, and the belt would have been about even, and it would have stayed where it's at. Instead, he lost to Shiden, who's down at Makushta 6 East. Um, yeah. she didn't finish with a six and one. So like, like Ryan was saying, there's a glimmer of hope that she didn't gets promoted to Jurio. Just it's... check Twitter. We we've got a small, but very loyal group of GSB belt followers. Uh, and we have just found out that she then was not ah! to the Jurio <laughs> division. Uh, it instead wondering. looks like they decided to keep Shimando Umi up in Jurio after a five and ten record. Wait, uh, what? From Jurio from eleven. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. They only demoted two guys. I don't. I don't know. I think they demoted more than that. I'm not sure all the statistics, but based on what I'm seeing uh, from our Twitter notifications, is that Shiden did not make it up to Jurio. <sighs> I was gonna say. I thought he was. Uh, based on my quick glance, I thought he would be third in line to get promoted from Makushta. It actually looked like he was like 
fourth or fifth based on what. Well, uh, he got a six and one. There's there's uh two obvious ones. Fuji Seiyun got a four and three from Makushita two. Chiyo Sakai got a five and two from Makushita two. Those guys were shoe ins. There's a couple guys in between two and six that have four and three records. So those from, guys could potentially be ahead of Shiden. But from like what I understand, which is only reading what uh Leonard from the Tachi I blog post, because I sure. don't follow this stuff. Uh the four the the four and three records from Makushta three has more priority than the six and one from Makushta six. Uh... It seems like the typical promotion zone from Makushta is one through five. And then you kind of got to get that seven and zero oh from like six to fifteen sure. if you want to go in. Ah. Well, Bummer. thanks a lot for crushing my dreams, Leonard. Um, <laughs> it is, is nice uh, that, that we know the fate early because they do announce the Jurio promotees ahead yeah. of time, and so that news just came out in right. Japan so if Shida's Wednesday. not on that list, like we know, we already know that he's not going up. Correct. So, right. Son cool. Of a bitch. <laughs> thanks right. leonard i'm displacing my anger onto you for <laughs> passing the news i'm shooting the messenger uh let's let's move on to the champ chump series results and, and flaric speaking I, of breaking my heart yeah, I was about yeah. to say, mm. speaking of which <laughs> we we have not been doing a good job whatsoever this episode in demeaning our suke bito oh. jake <laughs> You're right. Oh, wow. You're right, Yokozuna Ryan. And? <laughs> oh! Uh, Jake, and? you're muted. Suke Bito Jake, you're muted. Suke Bito Jake. Sorry, Yokozuna Ryan and Yokozuna Flaric. I was, <laughs> I was, I'm trying not to cough into the microphone, so I'm sorry if I forget to unmute myself. <laughs> Be better. Right. Try harder. Uh, sorry, Yokozuna. <laughs> oh. Uh, so yeah, it ended up in a tie. It was as exciting as the Yusho race in actual Grand Sumo was. That's how exciting the championship race was for the Champ Chump Prediction Series. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> how did your playoff I, go between the two of you? Uh, a gentleman's agreement to shame you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But it, uh, it came down to the final day, though. <laughs> it, it did come down to the final day. Um, Flarek got – he had Kiribayama as his, as his champ, and he got, I think, five points from Kiribayama got, yeah. on uh, day 15, one point for his win over Daesho, one point for his uh, uh, special prize, and the two points for his U show. Uh, you didn't so give him points. a point for, his, points, yeah. for a, his extra win in the playoff? It no. doesn't. It doesn't count in the. Wow, really? Sounds like Flarek, uh He's taking advantage of you here. <laughs> Your guy got another I did, win. I, I did know, just man. trust that you did the math correctly. This is interesting, <laughs> but I would definitely argue the point of not including the playoff win if I was in the other shoe. So <laughs> well, I'll allow yeah, it this because time because then it wouldn't be to your advantage. It wouldn't be in your favor. That's very true. I don't know. But I'm just I'll saying you're, this you're time. a Yokozuna of making picks, but not not a, a Yokozuna of uh, game theory. <laughs> you're, you're not going to turn us against Maybe. each other. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm doing my best, okay? <laughs> Flaric and I are the Mary and Pippin of this podcast. You're not breaking <laughs> us apart. Yeah. Uh, but Mac wasn't far off. So Flaric and I no. finished with 24 <laughs> points. Mac could just as easily have been Ko Yokozuna with Flaric had one match gone the other direction, and that match was <laughs> Takayasu versus Hoshoryu yep. on day 15. My champ versus Max champ. Whoever won that match got two points. Happened to me, my guy. I got those two points to tie with Flaric. So here, but I, I wasn't disappointed because that was a great match. I'm like the stare downs, yep. the head games. The, oh, we didn't even talk a about that match. Oh, sure. You're getting a bit big for his britches a little yeah, too early. Just a little bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> just a little but bit. that was a that was a fantastic stare down, though. But yeah, that oh, was yes. he definitely kind of it's just felt like he earned that one a little bit. Yeah, and then he but, got dumped like a sack of potatoes. I know. Yeah. But I hope that doesn't <laughs> was, stop him from beautiful. doing that. I hope that doesn't stop him. I love it. But anyway. <laughs> yes. So the punishment for Jake, which I thankfully will not be doing all the work for Jake's punishment this time, uh, <laughs> yeah. was decided that it was going to be a recreation of a movie scene of the winner's choice with a little bit of uh, a prompt for the loser on the direction that the sh- scene should go. So Flaric and I have had discussions and we have decided that your scene will be 
the Council of Elrond scene from the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. I can work uh, with this. Starting <laughs> with the line from Elrond, strangers from distant lands, friends of old, and ending from the line with uh, Pippin, great, where are we going? Uh, that's like 15 minutes. Like It's this not, scene. it's like eight <laughs> minutes and you'll deal with it. Yeah, I mean, I will. I'm just saying like... <laughs> If it if it you, you could have picked any scene in Lord of the Rings and I would have done it. You could have picked like the second <laughs> movie, but I'm still but still it's a long scene. So, Standard yeah. cut. Right. Uh, what is, what is, what is I, my I think prompt, Cleric though? and I need to need to have a quick emergency emergency discussion. Do we want to make him do the entirety of two towers? <laughs> oh, good point. That's a great point. <laughs> All right. So, like so what's uh time. what's like the topic you would like the scene to be rewritten for? Yes. So the scene will entail the council discussing how to prevent the impending doom of there being less than two Ozeki on the bonds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple of requirements <laughs> on that scene. One character. Oh, you already gave me the prompt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, let me let me work my magic from here. <laughs> All right. One it's, character written... must be a flat earther and speak a oh, minimum what? of one earth. You already got line. to do that punishment for me. <laughs> Damn it! Let me have it again. <laughs> Uh, but no, one one requirement that Flarek and I had, I counted up, there are 10 speaking roles in this scene. Yeah, yeah I was going to say it. It's <laughs> the not... Fellowship plus Elrond. Uh, there must be 10 different slash unique voices. It cannot be 10 <laughs> different verses, versions of regular Jake's speaking voice. Whether you do a little bit of falsetto, do a little bit of bass, do something, or you get us my, and my other people to... Boston accent. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it's do weird. Not do that. <laughs> Must be 10 different versions of 10 different unique voices for each of the characters. I, I love, I love that you counted that up because like, there's like 20 people there. Oh yeah. There's and a bunch of only people. those. It's only those 10 people who speak. That's a good, yeah. Like, there's... Technically you might hear them during an argument in the background. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but that's, yeah, <laughs> but that's no. doesn't count. there's there, but yeah, there's like, there's at least twice that many people there and like half of them are even like named characters, but they just don't speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That sounds like Lord of Rings. Everyone's a named character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So you got, you got that Jake. You're not going to try to, manipulate it at all to be in your favor or any way shape or form i mean you already picked like one of my it's favorite lord of the rings and like <laughs> i mean you, you didn't pick one to like try and embarrass me like your usual route so like i'm already kind of on i'm already kind of winning <laughs> yeah no this one is just very happy do the work this. for yeah. writing an eight yeah it's, it's just scene. a lot of work yeah <laughs> yeah Thank you. Appreciate A that. After me Lovely. having to do the flat earth research. <laughs> yeah. Your, uh, your search algorithms are forever Ruining tainted. my YouTube <laughs> algorithm for the sake of your punishment. It'll be nice to sit back on this one. <laughs> That's a good point. Question for you. Am I allowed to recruit other voices? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Encouraged. Gotcha. You can right. I'm obviously us. doing all the writing, but like uh, yeah. I'm allowed yeah, to I'll recruit. Yeah, i Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mac, for like, yeah, I'll do it. Ten. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll now featuring ten different voices of Mac. <laughs> yeah, I, I could. I, I have to. Out of voices. the people on this podcast, Mac would be the best to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's talk about our bold predictions and announce the winner of the GSB t-shirt. Uh, but before we can get to the good and great predictions, we've got to get through the bad predictions. Some really bad ones this time. <laughs> uh, Riviera PhD uh, might get their PhD revoked after predicting a Toby <laughs> Zaru you show. Oh, who was on your committee? <laughs> yeah. uh, Tim Sumo, one, one of the ardent oh, followers of the gsb belts <laughs> might get uh, his tim revoked uh oh <laughs> uh, he predicted that hoku seho would get more wins than kim bozan koto nawaka would get 11 plus wins no. takakesha would win the yusho and get promoted no. to yokozuna ochi would lose to tsukahara on day one <laughs> to send the gsb belt back to makushita in a roundabout Ooh. way he got it that uh, one was not the worst one. But not that way. <laughs> yeah, that was not the worst part of the Not prediction. like this. Not like this. Uh, Princess Lee Arden predicted a Taka no show you show. As as we mentioned before, hmm. Hakeyoi Sumo News and Stats predicted a Boo Shozan Zen show. Yeah. Not today. Uh, 
And then we had Metaphysics Vape predicted Asanoyama getting a Makekoshi and staying in Jurio. Hokuseiho finally doing something other than leaning on his opponents and discovering doing actual sumo wins in sumo. <laughs> Well, really did also sumo. Did not quite. <laughs> Maybe he did one actual sumo in that match against Kota Waco, but that was about it. <laughs> yeah. A- anytime he did do sumo, it seemed like it was by accident, like a minute in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we say this as at least I'm a fan of Hokuseo. I want good. Things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I want him to improve. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. anything that's unique and successful, I'm a huge fan of, like yeah. almost universally. <laughs> mm-hmm. But still. Uh, uh, good predictions that were they, they were good, just not quite good enough for the T-shirt. Uh, Toad Boy predicted that Nishiki Fuji, Midori Fuji, and Kim Bozon would all get double-digit wins. Not uh, bad, Toad Boy. That's pretty good. Robert Mock predicted that Shodai would get double digits, but no special prize. Uh, mm. Kirsna P. Kusuma predicted Shodai would be back to Sanyaku. I do predict he will be uh, Komosubi next Basho and Keen Bozon dominating lower Maegashira. Axel Baravesio predicted a Takakesho Kyujo. Shodai back to the Sanyaku after the Basho. Keen Bozon special prize and Kiri Bayama Yusho. You might think, damn, In that's a really good prognostication uh, there. Uh, Axel prediction. is on this list a lot, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, you know what? Axel, the reason you're not getting a T-shirt is because you've been on this list a lot. You, you've, you've already won. won. You've, you've already <laughs> won a T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> trust well, me, that was the tiebreaker. I'd say yes, because yes, the, yes, yeah, it because was. this other one was also the, like incredible. Yeah. The T-shirt winner, yeah, like Jake said, also incredible. Foxfire, not as many predictions, but damn, did he nail it? Kiri Bayama with a twelve and three playoff U show. That is Ooh, bravo, yeah. bravo. So Hold Foxfire, down. we will. Uh, get a hold of you. We will slide into your DMs on Twitter and get the DMs oh, yeah, we will. so that we can send you a GSB t-shirt. <laughs> uh, on to the GSB awards. Uh, I think for the second consecutive Basho, uh, Ura is going to win the Magic Man award uh, due to his uh, theatrics on day one where he had the great balance on one foot on the Tachi to stay up just long enough for Ichi Yamamoto to fall flat on his face before Ura <laughs> lost his balance. <laughs> Seems like there's at least one of those Abasha with Ura. Uh, we also have the You Should Have Known Better award uh, that goes to Toby Zaru <laughs> trying to Hanka Hoshoryu on day nine. Both that of them so leaving good. that match with a smile on his face. Uh, Hoshoryu like, can you believe this guy? And Toby Zaru's like, yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and then the I Ain't Losing This Match Award goes to Kiribayama for having the foresight and the planning. I, I'm sure he, he thought about this the day before the match, that I'm going to throw Daesho down. I'm going to step on his hand as I'm going mm. down to make sure I don't lose this match. And the uh, Machiavellian cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Mac, you had a GSB. I do. I, I have one that I wanted to hand out. That is the long, long match. And that goes to <laughs> Vittorio and Takano Show on day 13, who literally made me, as I was thinking there, as I was watching this match going, well, one of them has got to move eventually, right? I mean, they're, they're just standing there. Even you the Gyoji's like, uh, like, uh, ha- ha- Hakioi? Pardon, <laughs> <me. laughs> Pardon me, Hakioi. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I don't really have a cool name for it, but I, I wanted to nominate one because I don't think it's on here. But yeah, as I look through the the all scene globe, that is our outline. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the, uh, I think it was Kiribayam versus Hoshoryu. Was that? Yeah, the Kiribayam versus Hoshoryu. It was a very, very nice close match. And it was interesting because the, the, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, now, what's his name? Uh, Hoshoryu, yeah. Hoshoryu, he did the... F- <laughs> I was getting there. Thank you very much. I know much. you're getting there, Flag. I, I love... But I love... This, give, give this Yoko is the Zuna exciting Flair version of Flair. I'm just so excited. I, no, yeah. that's what I mean. This is like... You're actually excited. I love seeing this. Yeah, I, I, I love it when I can just pick up on these little tiny things that make me think, oh, maybe I kind of noticed some things about Sumo. as just like <laughs> weird amateur. But it's... uh, But no, like, it was very... They were both Yotsu specialists, and it was very, very even for a long time. But where it went wrong was uh, 
uh, Hokuto Fu, not Hokuto Fuji. <laughs> what show are you? <laughs> You're so excited. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he, he's the one who moved first, and then it was Kiribayama who was able to take advantage of that by reacting to it and get the advantage. And at that point, he was, the match was entirely over. And I just remember just kind of, like you said, like someone's going to move first, like you, that very, very long match. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you're the first one that moves, you're kind of at the disadvantage because of yep, that. You lose. So <laughs> yeah, I, that... I thought that was kind of a great showing of very even people. And like, just that's, that was the difference maker is, uh, uh, whole sure you did the first move and he, uh, he was, the uh, Kiribayama was able to capitalize on it. Mm. You, you see that a lot in like uh in in striking sports as well there are guys that specialize in like counter fighting as opposed to like aggression and mm -hmm. when two of those guys go against each other sometimes it sucks because it's, it's <laughs> just nobody wants to do anything and then one guy does something and the other guy beats him to it and the guy who started was like wow that sucked i'm not doing that again and then they just go back to staring <laughs> at each other yeah but no, both of those guys very, very technical, very aware that if the uh, that they have a counter move to any move that uh, that the other guy can throw at them, and are simultaneously aware that the other guy also has counters. So I better not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> better just to just stand here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So w were you nominating a match of the Basho? Is that what that was, Flarek? No, that was uh, okay. my uh, uh, that was Flarek short very short award. match. Nomination. The Flarex Excited Award. I think I think we'll actually call it Ver Flarex's very first GSB award because I think that's Ooh, what that was. I think that's true. <laughs> Still not sure who got it, but that's okay. Flarex learning how this part of the episode works. He's usually I heard Hokuto Fuji in there. Yeah, it's what? the fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It's the what? friends they made along the way. That yeah. is, those are the <laughs> that's, that's the that's the real match of the Basho. <laughs> Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so for match of the Basho, uh, I've got a lot more candidates written on here that I'm actually going to read out right now. Uh, but we got you remember the midway episode? We were kind of down. <laughs> <laughs> on this boss show. Oh, it was and depressing. Then, like, day eight immediately turned around all of our moods because there was like three great matches on day eight and the contenders really started showing up. It was fantastic. So like all of the match of the Basho contenders come from the second week. Um, I've got Kiribayama versus Ryuden on day nine, a great back and forth belt battle that Ryuden obviously lost because he went two and 13 this Basho. Uh, Ura versus Hokuseho on day 10. Uh, Ura getting a grip on Hokuseho and trying desperately to be able to throw him to the <laughs> ground, but Hokuseho being the behemoth he was, not allowing that to happen. Uh, Koto Shoho versus versus Ura, uh, just kind of, I think that was kind of a uh, Ura being a little wily guy trying to stay away from Koto Shoho. Koto Shoho eventually getting him in a Kotonage arm throw. Uh, Koto Eko versus Hokuseho on day eight. That was a match that Hokuseho started from behind because he's got a terrible Tachi eye. Koto <laughs> yep. Eko yep. had a good <laughs> belt grip on him, was pushing him out, and Hokuseho showed the most fire we saw from him. All Basho just reached behind <laughs> Kota Waco, grabbed his belt, and then threw him out with, I think it's the Hari Manage, uh, 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 Kimarite that hasn't been seen in quite a while. That, uh, yeah, that was, that, that was my pick. Uh, but yeah, that one, that one was wild. Like it, immediately after being, after recording a downer midway, we're like, wait, here's Sumo's happening again. Sumo's it's awesome. doing things. <laughs> Uh, Hoshoryu versus Midori Fuji on day 13. That was a really fun match where Hoshoryu had the advantage throughout the entire match, but he kept, he tried plan A, Midori Fuji had a, had a block for that. Tried B, Midori Fuji had a block for that. Had plan C, D, E, Midori Fuji had a block for it. And then eventually Midori Fuji's feet fell out from under him and Hoshoryu got the win. It was very fun kind of seeing very clearly seeing like Hoshoryu what he was planning to do to Midori Fuji and Midori Fuji being able to counter that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then unfortunately Midori Fuji just not being able to find every single counter possible. Uh, and then the one that's ultimately looks like it's going to take the title of match of the Basho for us. Kiri Bayama versus Tobi Zaru on day eight uh, started off as a very traditional Tobi Zaru match where he, he wants nothing to do with getting close to you. He wants to <laughs> dance around you uh, until you make a mistake. Unfortunately for him, this Basho, 
a lot of people kind of figured that out and they weren't weren't committing to a whole lot, weren't making a mistake, and Kiri Bayamo was doing just that. They danced around each other for a while. Uh, then they got uh, interlocked in a belt battle that, because it's Kiri Bayama versus Toby Zaru, Kiri Bayabia. Kiri Bayama obviously ended up winning, but it was close at the Tawara. They were both throwing each other uh, at the edge of the Tawara. Kiri Bayama just got a bit better of an angle, got a bit better throw, was able to make Toby Zaru land before Kiri Bayama did. Uh, so that is our match of the Basho. Mm. Uh, Mac, what was your favorite moment of this Basho? My favorite moment uh, has to be final day, just Takiyasu versus Oshoryu. Just that stare down and the way that that match that I was on my feet screaming at the TV. Mm. The only match I did that for this entire tournament. So that was my favorite moment. Even though it didn't go my way, I was like, still a good match. Uh, for me, I'm going to take the easy answer of the playoff uh, just because looking back at our uh, discord where we talk about the Basha just amongst ourselves looked like starting day 10. I was really on the uh, anybody <laughs> but Daisho winning this Basho uh, and it, the prayers were answered. My yes. prayers yeah. were finally <laughs> answered. Uh, I just. Daisho doesn't do anything for me and seeing him win a second Yusho wasn't anything I was interested in watching and uh, Kiribayama winning his first Yusho in route to a hopeful Ozeki promotion seemed like a lot more fun to me than a Daisho Yusho so that was my favorite point <laughs> where I got to be happy about the past 15 days instead of sad and sour because Daisho won <laughs> sure yeah. uh, what about you Jake what was your favorite moment you might not have as many moments to choose from as the I do have days fewer. Take it from you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take the cop out answer that I have added two new pieces of souvenirs to the back wall here. Ooh, this nice. is uh, a one of the extra winners envelopes from the Kuma Sumo Bash, Ooh. and this is the Nationals poster. You may not be able to see it, but this no, is our logo. Oh, oh yeah, definitely can't see the logo. But no, yeah. definitely can't. I could can see Karinga though. <laughs> yeah, Karinga and Kyle on that poster. Uh, Kyle's Kyle has been uh, making jokes that his uh, his his bare ass was used for marketing here, and he's proud of that. <laughs> but uh, but no, having our logo on that, I I I know Mac can relate to this, but like going somewhere to see sumo, mm. and in the wild seeing our logo on stuff is the coolest feeling in the world. Uh, like Mac, when we traveled for nationals that one year and we saw somebody wearing our T-shirt. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's that kind of a feel when you go like we went to a, a bar next door to the gym and they had flyers up for nationals with our logo on it. And it's like amazing. You know, it's the coolest <laughs> thing in the world that like, you know, the stuff that the stuff that we're doing to help promote amateur sumo is, mm. uh, you know, is out there. So that that's the selfish side of it. But also just the idea mm. that we're able to do all this and and help help bring amateur sumo forward with like our streaming agreed. and our, uh, wholeheartedly agree all that stuff yeah it's and uh yeah because this basho was what it was with me being sick and on the road for like 90 percent of it and then <laughs> losing a bunch of matches and stuff <laughs> i'm gonna cop out and take the amateur sumo answer for me <laughs> <laughs> that's fair cleric what was your favorite moment of this tournament the uh kiribayama win was good because i've always like enjoyed this guy he he's like there's one of those groups of people I always enjoy. But I think my favorite part was the next day I went looking on sumo forums for some cool pictures. And I just saw a bunch of pictures of Kiribayama just with a huge smile on his face. And mm. he, he was a happy, happy guy after winning that you show. So I, uh, that, that brought me a lot of joy just kind of seeing how much it meant to him. Wasn't he sumo kaboom's sexiest rickshi this year? They called him Kiribay Yummy, if I remember their episode correctly. <laughs> not bad. That's not bad. I, I think uh, we have been chastised for not referring to the Seki Wake, this Basho, as the Sexy Wake. Mm. Um, uh, not yeah. sure that title's going to fit as well next Basho. We'll still have Kiribay Yummy and Hoshoryu, who I believe Hoshoryu won the Sexiest Rikshi Alive in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, but throwing Daisho in there oh, kind of really <laughs> yeah, puts a hamper on the sexy wake title <laughs> and wakamoto is fine but he, he's what not on he the level fine? as 
Exactly. No, he ain't <laughs> kitty bat yummy, baby. That's the question that keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> These, this is what occupies GSB thoughts when we're not recording. So yes. in the next hour of our show, we will be discussing. <laughs> <laughs> Wakamoto How do you like fine your rickshaw? Fine or fine. <laughs> mm. <Yeah. laughs> we'll start with the thighs. All right. So they're nice and thick, <laughs> which is what I always like to see. All right. Is this uh, one of those bits where you're just going to keep going until I turn off the recording? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's avoid that, and I'll just say thank you, everybody, for listening. Actually, a quick promo. Um, I need to – I think planning on doing this, it might fall through, but right now Mac and I are planning on doing a uh, sumo trading card uh, unboxing video in the Hell next yeah. couple of days. I uh, got inspiration from one of our patrons, Chris Laufer, who recently bought a box of these. I'm like, you know what? That makes for some pretty – good like merch to have and it's just kind of fun uh so we're gonna get a box with 120 uh sumo cards uh the 2023 series one box so we're gonna do a youtube i think youtube exclusive video where we unbox those within the next couple of days i really don't see how that'll translate to a podcast very well <laughs> um, so sure? we will yeah. find out <laughs> another reason to subscribe to the grand sumo breakdown <laughs> yeah. youtube channel we make uh, card unboxing fun that's right. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully that actually happens. Uh, but the next Basho will be the Natsu Basho in May. Things will move back to Tokyo. That'll be kicking off on Sunday, May 14th. We'll have that unboxing episode. I'm sure Jake is going to have a couple of different recaps of the amateur sumo events he's yep. gone to. We'll have our Bonds K prediction and review in between this Basho. Uh, maybe we'll find time to do something else in there. Uh, but until then, thank you, everybody, for listening. Seriously, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about Wakamoto Haru's thighs. I'm totally down <laughs> for that. So you like How the shape caps? or you like the length first? Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. <laughs>